and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. Now in my first four videos, I mainly talked about equipment. In this video and the next few, I'm going to change direction and talk about how you could improve your photography. This one will be focused on photographer's block. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of writer's block, where a writer sits down at the computer and just can't get started. Well, that could also happen to photographers. So, what do you do? Well, I'm going to offer a few suggestions and then an exercise. Now, just to prepare you, when we get to that exercise, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to cost you any money. You can do it in your home or apartment, but it will take a lot of thinking, concentration, and some time. So, for starters, what I suggest, visit an art museum. Look at the photography, look at the paintings, even the sculpture, just for inspiration. You're not going to copy another photographer's work, but just use it for inspiration. And of course, you know, you can visit your local bookstore and, and look at works of photography. Or, of course, it's easy today, just go online and look up some photographers. I suggest you look back at some of the uh, old greats, you know, Paul Strand, Alfred Stiglitz, Edward Steichen, of course, Ansel Adams. When I was starting out, I was fortunate to find this book in a used bookstore. Masters of Photography by Beaumont and Nancy Newhall. It has a lot of great images in it to inspire. The reproductions aren't that great, but the photographs are. Now, it's long out of print. It was published in 1958. Um, but you know, maybe you could find it on eBay or in a used bookstore. OK, so now you've gone to the art museum. You looked at some work. Give it a shot. See what you can do. See if that works for you. Also, you can revisit places you've been before. Let's say you've been to some place close to home, a park, uh, with a lake, whatever, and you made some photographs, but you're just not happy with them. Well, try going back in different light. Try going back first thing in the morning, right after sunrise, or later in the evening, just before and after sunset. Things will look totally different. Also, don't stay inside if the weather's bad. Sometimes you can make some great photographs in the fog, in the rain, and in a snowstorm. Okay, so now let's get to that exercise I talked about. Okay, like I said, it's not easy, but it should help. All right, so what you need to do is find five or six objects, regular objects in your home. Just plain old a chair, a, uh, a rolling pin, uh, anything. Uh, items that you see every day that don't seem visually exciting. And what you're going to do is take your camera, and it doesn't matter. It could be film, it could be digital, a point and shoot, it doesn't really matter. But what I do suggest is that you use a normal lens. So for a full frame camera, film or digital, that would be around 50 millimeters. For a um, crop sensor camera, the equivalent, depending on uh, the crop, it could be a 30 or a 35 millimeter lens. But, and if you have a zoom, if you only have a kit zoom, you know, don't despair. You don't need a lot of equipment for this exercise. Uh, if you have a kit zoom, set it to an equivalent focal length for about 50 millimeters. Okay? Uh, you're not going to need any special lighting, just normal room light or window light. And take those objects, those five or six or seven objects, and I want you to photograph them in multiple ways. And this is what I mean. You're going to take, let's say, six shots. And this works out good if you're shooting film. Because if you have six objects and you shoot six pictures of each, that uses up a 36 exposure roll. With digital, of course, it doesn't matter. So what you're going to do, you're only going to vary three things. Your distance from your subject matter, um, the framing, and the angle that you're shooting it at. Just think, 
before each shot. And I would also recommend if you have one, use a tripod. That'll help to slow you down and even use manual focus. All these things will help to slow you down. I know with these auto everything digital cameras, it's easy just to fire off a ton of shots in a matter of minutes. But we don't want you to do that for this. Just take your time, study your subjects, and produce these photographs. Okay, so now you shot all the pictures, head over to your computer, or have your film developed, and look at each image. By the way, if you're shooting film, I suggest you shoot in black and white. And if you're shooting digital, uh, in your raw converter or whatever editing software you use, convert those images to black and white. That eliminates the issue of color, and you don't have to worry about uh, white balance, and uh, I think it would just simplify things. Your goal is to make one interesting image of each object. And if you did that for all six objects, great. If you didn't, maybe you got three good images, go back and reshoot the other three objects. And don't be discouraged. It could take a little bit of time. Might have to do this over a period of a couple days. But it will really help you in the long run. And now let's say you have those six images. You have six images that you feel are good. Um, put it aside for a day or two. Um, and revisit those photos in a, in a day or two. And you may see them differently then. Um, and I think this will really help to spark your creativity. And then when you're out back at that park or on vacation or whatever, you can apply what you learned in this exercise to those photographic opportunities. And you will see things differently. You'll explore different angles. So uh, I hope this has helped. I hope you were able to go out and be more creative. And in my next video, along the same lines, I'm going to be talking about macro photography at home. Okay? The world looks different when you get super close. So we will be discussing how to do that and um, giving some tips on that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you'll be notified anytime I publish a new video. Now, I'll be doing that. I'll be publishing a new video every Wednesday morning. And if you didn't like it, please leave a comment in the comments below. Let me know what you didn't like. I'm trying to make these videos better each time, and your comments will help. Okay, so go out and make some interesting images. I'd really like to see some of them. So uh, email me a link to your Flickr account or Instagram. So I will talk to you next time. Thank you.